Hey, y'all, it's time to learn. It's time to learn. We've been waiting for this all week to be able to give y'all some value and show you how to actually use something in your uh, tech career. All right. So first, though, thank you all for showing up to this LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook Live, where we're going to be learning more about GitHub Copilot. I got a special guest for y'all today. I'm about to bring him up to the stage. And look, make sure you make sure y'all give us some hand. All right, when he come on stage, because this person is a principal consultant in tech. He is a Microsoft MVP and Microsoft community champion. You know, um, excuse me, y'all, if y'all hear some in the background, my, my phone's going off. Let me cut that off. I apologize. And this gentleman here is here to help you understand a new AI tool with a service that a lot of you probably already been using anyway in tech GitHub, but now it's GitHub. Copilot AI assistant. I'm gonna bring him to the stage. Y'all put the LKs in the chat. Let me see the LK in the chat right now for your, your big brother, Lars Clint. What's up, Lars? Thank you for joining me on this live, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's the best intro I've had yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to see the I need to see the LKs in the chat. If you can hear us, you can see us. Put the LKs in the chat, and I'm gonna periodically check Instagram because Instagram comments don't come. To this uh, platform, just make sure anybody who has questions, etc., ah, gets gotcha. the questions answered. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, great. Somebody said they can hear us. Yeah, great, great, great. So, cool. thank you so much for joining us, man. The people have been excited to to learn more about GitHub Copilot, and you're the man to bring it to them. You're the man that helped them understand how to simply use it today. And, you know, we're just going to hop straight into it and just tell them a little bit more about yourself for those who don't know you. Sure. No, thanks, man. So, yeah, I'm, hi, I'm Lars. Um, and, yes, I am actually broadcasting to you from a farm in the middle of nowhere in Australia. Really? <laughs> um, if I could, I would show you the llamas that are just outside my window as well. No, I'm not making that up. Um, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of Copilot co stuff in the last uh, few months, basically four months, something like that. Uh, workshops, talks, various things, because I think this is one of those tools that <sighs> if you don't know it, you are going to fall behind. So I always get this question. I like to put this up front. Like, is AI going to take my job? I'm like, no, no. AI is a tool. AI is something that we, as humans, we train a model and we create something that create, makes us better. But if you don't learn something like GitHub Copilot, the people that do will take your job, right? So it's one of those tools that we have to, as technologists, like we always had for 40 years at least, had to learn new things. So this is just another step on the way. However, this is uh, quite the difference in skill that we can achieve using this tool. Like it's, it's a really a, a huge jump up. So we'll get to that. First, I'm just going to share my screen and we're going to not screw this up, Brodus, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so here I've shared this. There we go. So this is the hold on one second. Um, sure. There we go. Yeah, you're good. So kind of you know, where do we start? Okay. Well, what do you need? What is Copilot? So Copilot is a coding tool and it's a tool that sits in your workflow. So it's not something you gotta go out like ChatGPT, you flick between windows and you ask it something, or you know, if you Google something with Bing then you go to a website and you find that this is in your workflow, right? I'll show you what that means in just a second, but it's really important part of this staying in the flow. So this is the main page for GitHub Copilot. And it's called Copilot because it's like having someone sitting next to you, helping you steer the plane, right? So you are the pilot and you have a Copilot. That's kind of the analogy. So this is where you sign up. 
if you don't have a GitHub uh, Copilot account or GitHub account, you need both, then you can sign up. You get 30 days for free or something. It is a paid tool, but it is so worth the money. But you can just start for free and try it out. So we have here the just the website. And as a, you know, like any other website you've seen, blah, blah, blah. These stats are actually true. 55% um, faster coding, it really is. And I'll show you why. Um, we'll get to all the good examples in just a second. Um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, there's like a million people using it, or one and a half million people using it now. So it's 50,000 people business that adopted GitHub Copilot, one in three, blah, blah, blah. All the different stats that you might want to know to make a decision. But it really is a popular tool. It is very easy to get started with, and it's it's very non-intrusive, I think. So anyway, uh, if you want to sign up, go here, have, test it out. If you want to, it costs about, I can't remember, 20 bucks a month, something like that. But it is really worth it, like really. Uh, if you are in a job and your company doesn't have Copilot and you are, you do coding, you, know, you, you are a programmer, it might be worth checking out. Um, this is what I've done the workshops on, to be honest. It's how do you get the most out of Copilot? And they're like full day workshops type thing. So um, what is it? We've covered that. Who is it for? You think it'd be just for developers, but it's actually for more than just developers. Um, but we can get to that at the end. I'm going to focus a little bit on developers and not to go too broad. And uh, get started. Yeah, free Cobalt license. You need that. You need a GitHub account. And then we need uh, an IDE. And I'm going to share that. And through the magic of internet, I'm going to share a different screen. Um, there it is. Okay. So this is, for those that don't know, this is Visual Studio Code or VS Code um, for the, you know, the friends among us. This is a, an IDE, an integrated developer environment, which is made by Microsoft and is currently, I believe, the most popular developer tool. Um, probably so. I'm wrong. Say again? I said probably so. Yeah. Yeah, it's up there. It's, it's most developers would either use it or have heard of it or use it occasionally, sort of that thing. Um, no, you don't have to, but for GitHub Copilot, this tool makes sense, or Visual Studio. Um, and there's, I think, IntelliSense, uh, sorry, IntelliJ um, also works with it, but don't, it comes to more and more IDs all the time. Um, so, do you want to ask anything I missed, Brodus? So, my question, and I know you said uh, you, you'll cover it uh, in the end. So, for a person who doesn't know how to code or just mm -hmm. learning, oh, that's the best Copilot, part help them learn how to code better yeah. and cleaner yeah. faster. I'm going to show you that right now, actually. All right. Um, so we have v VS Code here. And the way VS Code works, you have a workspace here. This just says welcome. It'll be code in a minute. And then we have a bunch of tabs on the left. And one of those is extensions. This is the how you extend Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. And in here, you need two extensions, um, GitHub Copilot specifically. We need uh, GitHub Copilot which is there. And then we need GitHub Copilot chat, which is the other one. Um, so there, there's two slightly different ways of using Copilot. And once you have those, you're kind of good to go. Now, today I'm going to use C Sharp and I'm going to use something called Blazor, but don't worry too much about the technology I'm using. That's not really the point. It's just that I'm familiar with those, those two systems or, or frameworks. Um, if you're a Java developer, if you're a uh, Node.js, if you're Python, it works with all of it. So don't pay too much attention to the language I'm using, more the techniques, right? Um, so once you have those two installed, you'll see you get a little chat window here. That is Copilot. So we can talk to it. So I'm going to go here. That's the first thing. It says, welcome. I'm your Copilot, and I'm here to help you get things done faster. Is that big enough? I might just try and make this a little I was bit literally bigger. about to ask you that. Can you make it a little yeah. bit bigger so people can see? Uh, can I? No. Hang on. Yes, I can. Why is it not making it bigger? Um, maybe I can't make this page bigger. I'll okay. do it in just a second. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's a bit weird. Uh, oh, we'll get to that. I haven't forgotten. No, run, 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 run. Yeah. Okay. Um, but here we have Copilot. Uh, I mean, it's ready to talk. So if you, if you use chat, some of your chat TBT, it's very similar. In fact, it's the same models lying underneath. So Copilot uses the same models as chat TBT. Which is great because it make, means that we're sort of familiar with the the kind of um, conversation we can have. Um, now, Copilot, what it does is that it makes it much more um, specific 
or domain specific. So for example, I could say here, uh, can you help me write a chapter for my new novel, Best Voice in Radio? I'm referring to Broadus because his, his voice is amazing. Um, <laughs> and if you do that, you'll see here it goes, sorry, I can only assist with programming related questions. Right. Oh, right. Okay. So it's not ChatGPT, but it's the same model underneath. I hope that makes sense. Um, what we can do, though, is uh, it's something you can always trick it and you say, um, I won't do that, but you can sort of, oh, I need data for a website about, you know, best voice and radio. And they go, oh, sure. <laughs> right. So if you make it technology related, then it's all go, yeah, sure, I can help. But this is the system, right? We talk to it. This, well, this is one way to talk to Copilot. So I'm going to ask it something to, to get it started. So you were asking before, can I learn to program with this? And you absolutely can. I'll show you. So I want to create an app or an application, we should probably be more specific, that can mimic a, this is going to be a bit of a contrived example, but bear with me, a standard calculator. And of course, we all have calculators, right? But I want to, I want to, I want to write an app because maybe that's a good way of get started to learn how to uh, to write uh, to program. Because I kind of know what I expect out of a calculator, so I I'm not inventing the wheel in order to start learning to program, right? So maybe uh, standard calculator, which uh, has the standard functions, right? Now I'm making a lot of assumptions here. I am. You know, assuming it knows what a calculator is, it's probably fair, but also just saying standard functions. And what that what that does is that it gives Copilot some room to be creative. Right? If you don't want that, you be more specific. Uh, obviously, I need to tell it what language I want to do this in. I want this whoop, to be in C Sharp and using the Blazor framework. Blazor is just uh, one of Microsoft's technology for uh, creating websites. It's called Blazor. So uh, again, don't stress over the technology. OK, if I just give it this, let's see what happens. Right? And again, <laughs> Copilot is not deterministic. I don't get the same result every time I ask a question. The same question will give me 10 different answers 10 different times. Right? So this is uh, propolistic. It is just guessing. Just like ChatGPT, it is guessing what might come next. All right, let me just make this a bit bigger. So I have a question as this. Yeah, as, go for it. So for those of you, let's say some of you on here that don't know how to code, right? And mm -hmm. can I look at the code that is just generated? And can I tell Copilot, hey, let's say we highlight a section of code. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is telling me. Hey, Copilot, can you tell me what's going on in this? You're piece way of code? ahead of me. All right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but you can't. Yeah, Short okay. answer is yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, so, so now it's actually giving us quite a good reply uh, or response. So here it's it's going through the steps of this is what you would do to start it. I went, okay, set up the Blazor project. If I don't know how to do that, sometimes it won't give me that step. It's just sometimes it doesn't. But then I can ask it, hey, I don't know how to use Blazor. Can you help me set up my first project? And it go, yeah, hey, sure. The good thing about Copilot is very positive and it's very supportive. It doesn't judge you. It just goes, of course I can. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so I'm going to use this CLI now, which is a command line interface. That's what CLI is short for, which is a terminal down here. And you can see I'm already in my right folder. Otherwise, you would go to the folder where you would create this project. Um, so I now have this command here. It says run this. Okay. All right. I'm just going to copy paste it in. And that is the actual command to create a new Blazor um, WebAssembly app. So sure. So I'll just hit that, and then it'll think about it for a second. And it'll go through what it normally would in terms of uh, creating a sort of a frame, a, a basic framework app, or scaffolding it is another term. And yeah, there we go. So now, up in my Explorer, there was nothing there before. I now have a calculator app, and I now have files. And I, I didn't know how to do that. Well, maybe I did. But if I didn't, there we go. We now have a full app. I'm like, OK, cool. That's that's neat. Um, there's even, you know, if I go into the pages here, so this I know how this is structured, right? But we have like a home.razor. There we go. 
Hello world, welcome to your new app. Okay, cool. So this is just a website, right? I can run this um, and it would show me, show me the website. I'll do that in just a second. So, okay, what's the next step? Navigate to the project directory. Okay, cool. So I better do that. So I'm gonna go CD calculator app. So now we are in the right folder. Okay, cool. Open pages of index.razor. Oh, I'm sort of ahead of it. Oh, that's home. Let's go to index. There is no index.razor. Ah, interesting, right? So we go, oh, that doesn't match, but that's okay. We can we can tell it, hey, this is there is no index, or we can just use home.razor, or we can rename it. There's many things. Again, it's a co-pilot. It's not going to do it for us. It's going to give us suggestions of what to do. And sometimes it gets it wrong. It just does. Uh, so it's a co-pilot. It's not a pilot. It's really important to have that distinction. Um, okay. And then we have implement calculator logic. Sure. Create a method for each operation. Yeah. Okay. And then we need to handle user input. And then there's some pseudocode, as in it does this a lot. Copilot will uh, very often give you... Um, like it'll describe what to do rather than do it. So here mm -hmm. we'll say, oh, here's what you need to do. And then there's a sample implementation. And this probably won't do everything we want it to do. The reason it does that, I think, and again, I don't know how they made this. I'm, I don't work for Microsoft um, or GitHub, is that this model that it runs on, or these models, because it uses various, um, one, it's expensive to run. So you want to limit the output you get back because it's you know there's some costs associated. But I also think that if it gave you the entire folder file, you go, oh crap, I don't even know where to start, right? So you get this sort of overwhelming feeling. Instead, it sort of guides you through and gives you, hey, here's how I would approach it. And then you can sort of, okay, I'm going to try it on my own or I'm going to ask it more questions or whatever it is that your next step is. So again, it's, it's sort of guiding you. It's not doing it for you. Um, okay, well, we have now a decision to make. Do we just use home.razor? Do we uh, rename it? Or what do we do? So we have, um, actually, I think it created a WebAssembly rather than a Blazor server, which is a technical distinction. That's why we got this. Um, so we could say here, I don't have an index.razor file. And then it'll sort of, so here's an interesting part of it. I'll just let this finish and I'll explain. So as I ask a question, so the first time, obviously, we had nothing. Now that we have something in our project, that has become its context. Context is everything. So I want to scroll up here. You can see it says used one reference. And if you open that, we can see, oh, it uses calculator app pages. So we can see where, uh, sorry, home razor in that folder. So it's used our file here to try and answer that question better. The assumption being that, well, you're going to ask questions about the file you're working on, which is the file that's open. So the way that Copilot um, makes a decision on, on the context um, by default is it'll use the tab that's open, and then it'll use other tabs that aren't, and so tabs that you have but aren't active, and then it'll maybe use the file system, probably not. So that's sort of the, the 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 hierarchy, and that means you can ask questions about exactly what you have. I say, oh, given that your file is home.razor, not index, you can apply the same principles. Oh, great! So it's teaching us, it's guiding us through, and it's because I'm asking questions that are very low level. It's giving me answers that are very basic, which is great. It's exactly what I wanted. So here's how you can modify home.razor. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that looks good. What do you reckon? Thumbs up? I can't actually see you, but I assume you give me a thumbs up. Um, so there's a little really cool uh, shortcut here. Uh, there's a few, actually. There's copy, and then there's insert a cursor, and then there's more actions, which is insert to new file or insert into terminal. So we can sort of make it even quicker. So if I were to delete this, I could just press that little button, and it would go across. Hooray. So now we have, well, we have a page. We have a razor page. And we have here on click, append number, etc. Um, and there's a whole bunch of code in here. So we should probably try and um, run it. Oh, and then down here, actually, no, I'll get to that in just a second. I don't want to confuse you too much. So we've now talked to Copilot. We have a conversation. We have context. And by the way, the chat that you have follows your project. So if I were to open another folder, another project now, and come back, 
the chat would still be there, right? So we have the context following the project, which is really important as well, of course. Um, right. Does that make sense, brothers? You're sort of my sounding board here. Yeah, yeah. So it's similar to ChatGPT as well, where you create um, your chats and you can save your chats on the side uh, of the dashboard and come back to them later. Yep, exactly. Um, and now at this point, I have something that probably resembles um, a calculator. Well, let's try. I'm going to need your help to switch the, um, the screen here as well because yep. I'm going to have to swap over. But it'll just take a second just to build for the first time and fire up and et cetera. Uh, it starts a web server locally that I can then run this place I have on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, oh, that was pretty quick, actually. So it gives me an address here. And I'm just going to open that uh, here. I'll show you. Just hang on a second. And because I have to stop the screen. And then I have to present again. <laughs> that's that's StreamYard. That's StreamYard. That's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just, we work with technology. That's how it is. <laughs> so here is the stock standard Blazor app, right? So now we have no calculator here. So I'm wondering what actually, what has happened? Because we are, let me just try one second. And I'll show you what I did in just a minute. Okay. So everyone, what he's seeing right now is basically a code that he showed you earlier where they say, hello world, welcome to your new app. And that was the front yep. end of the code where it's now deployed. And that piece of code is what displays to you as the customer if you ever go to a um, any website, right? So let's say this website was LarsClint.com. And he deployed that, displayed or deployed that piece of code to show you, the user, this is what you will see if you go to LarsClint.com. Um, yeah, so he, can, he can create any type of dynamics to that code to say, I want the page to be yellow. I want these words to be bold, et cetera. I wanted to show cats and llamas uh, on the front inside of the code that he showed you earlier, that, that specific piece that said, hello world, welcome to your next app. And you will be able to see that on the front end. Yeah. Um, all right. I just want to show you now what's happened because this is, this is might be interesting. All right. Okay. So we're back in VS Code. So I just changed this bit up here to calculator. So that's just saying the path should be calculator in the URL for the browser. Like the website should be localhost or slash calculator. And I then ran it again and I got these errors down here. Oop. So you can see it says building. Oh, no, there's a cannot convert from char to string on line 20. So that's this line here. Right. Okay. Right. So what you can do is you can say, well, I need copa. I don't understand what that is. So what you can say is I can, I can, I can, I can copy this. There's, there's different ways of doing it, but I could, for one, I can copy paste this and I can, I can highlight that row and then I can either ask it down here in, in the chat, or there's another way you can do it. You can click the little icon here and I can ask specifically about that line. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is really cool because you get in line. So there's, you know, as I said, there's multiple ways of using Copilot in your program. So here I can say, I get this error for this line, and then we can just paste that error in. And then it'll give us a result, uh, reply in line. And then it says, oh, the error is occurring because the set operation, which is that function there, method expects a string argument, but the plus character is being passed as a char or character. To fix this, you can modify the code to pass the plus character as a string. Oh, okay. So what it's done, it's actually suggested the fix as well. You can see the fix is applied. This has two string. So that is one way of fixing it that Copilot is suggesting. If I ask this question again, it might give us a different fix. This is pretty basic, so it'd probably be the same. But we can, okay, yeah, sure. Easier would be to, I'll show you, but we can accept this in line. And, and there it is. We've now... Mm. fixed it or we hope so right an easier way to do it might just be to make it double quotation which is the there we go oh because that wouldn't work because we got to anyway that is one way you could do it 
I'm being, I'm going and getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, right. So if that works, we probably need to do it on all four because we got four errors, right? Oops. So just to, I don't know if I'm getting ahead a little bit, but just Go for it. those of you who may say, hey, I would like to try this, but the error that just popped up and the fix that it gave me, I do not know what that means. I'm assuming just like ChatGPT, you can ask Copilot, hey, are you able to explain this to me as I'm a 10 year old? Yep. Yep. And Copilot and will explain it to you as you're a 10 year old. Yeah. I just want to see if this works. You can see it's running now. And then I will get to a whole bunch of the tools because we only got an hour today. So I'll just make sure I don't waste everybody's time as well. So let me just go to here. And I'll share my screen, don't worry. Okay, so I'm gonna stop screen, present. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, so we now have a simple calculator. But I don't know, does it actually work? We're not sure yet. Obviously we haven't gone through the code. That would be your job. <laughs> um, but we have buttons and we haven't, we haven't, we haven't done much. And we've asked Copilot, we've got some code. So your learning exercise in this is to understand what this is doing. Oh, here's a bunch of code. Now it's running. What is it actually doing? Or if you already knew C Sharp, you go, oh, that doesn't sound right. Or that doesn't look right. Or I'm going to fix this bit here. So we could go two plus two. Oh, it works. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> two plus three is five. <laughs> so we have a calculator, right? And again, I'm surprised because I'm sounding surprised because I've now done these demos so many times and I get different result every time. Sometimes I've had an infinite loop being put in, not in this calculator app, but in another app. And you just go, why? And it's just because either you didn't give it enough context or it's a co-pilot. It's giving you suggestions. So let's go into Visual Studio Code again and I'll show you a whole bunch of the little tricks that you might not get when you started on your own. Because you can do this now, I'm assuming. You can talk to Copilot. You can ask it questions. And then my next question would be, because my OCD, you go, this doesn't look right. Can you help me style it? And make it look like a calculator, right? But it'll do that. It'll give you some CSS, and it'll help you style it. So, all right, I'm going to share VS Code again. All right, here we go. go. So, tricks. I'm going to stop running this. There we go. Now, you saw one of them just before. Um, if you highlight something, you get the little stars here as well. Now, another way of doing that is on my keyboard, pressing Control-I, or if you're on a Mac, it's Command-I, and that will give you that same little box. So that's another way of chatting or asking Copilot things. Now, there's something in here called slash commands. It says type slash for commands which are these, right? So um, let's actually just highlight something because I go, I don't understand what this thing does. I'm not sure. Highlight, press control I, and I can go explain, just like Broadus was mentioning before. And I go, I just explain what this does and it'll give you an explanation. Yada, yada, yada. Mm. Right, so the code does this. This is very, very powerful. Now, similarly, what I can do, I can say, and this is what developers love because we don't like writing documentation. It's not our strong side. You can get inline documentation. Now, this is a very simple example, but you can also do that for someone else's code. Yay, right? Or your own code in six months' time when you've forgotten what you wrote. <laughs> um, awesome. So, yeah, so this this is this these slash commands are super super powerful. Um, fix is the debugging part of it. You can this one you got to be a little bit careful with because it will find an error. Even if there isn't an error, it will find an error. <laughs> it will find something to fix, right? And it actually gives you the example of what it could look like when it fixes it, right? So just be careful with that one because this one obviously didn't have an error. Like, so, um, but these are really, really powerful. Now, those are two ways of using Copilot. There's the chat, there's the inline chat with the slash commands. And then there is, if you've been using Copilot before, you might have seen this because this is the OG way of doing it. You can actually just start typing. See, it gives you there. I didn't even do anything. It suggests what you might want to do. 
Right, so I can say, no, actually, I want it's a private. And it, it starts suggesting uh, and guessing what it is that you want to do. Or another way of doing it is simply writing a comment and say a function that does the square root of a number. It even guesses that, right? And then as I hit enter, it'll it'll suggest it. So you tell it in line basically what to do. If I hit tab, it's there. I now have a square root function that takes a that returns a double and takes a double. And that's it, right? And this this becomes really powerful because you can then start coding because you're like, no, now I've got this, and it'll try to suggest what you might want to do. And you can just hit tab and it'll auto complete it for you, or you can just ignore it and keep typing. You know, either way. Now this can be a little bit jar jarring at first when you get when you start coding because it'll just keep suggesting things. You go, no, stop suggesting, but you just get used to it, ignoring it. <laughs> um, so that that's another way of doing it. That makes sense. Yeah. Anybody have questions? Feel free to put them in the comments. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, take questions after. That. Yeah, I definitely will put the question up and we can answer it for you. But in sure. simplicity, right, we don't want you to get confused about the code itself. Yeah. We want you to look at the functions. Like, let's say if you said, I wanted to learn Python, right? You can literally just ask Copilot to generate you some code that, hey, I want to create an app that does this. Can you create me some Python code? And then for you to learn, you can highlight that section of code and be like, I don't know what this does. I want to learn from scratch. And it will explain to you exactly what that piece of code does. And so now you can start seeing more code like that and you can understand exactly what it's doing. It's helping you learn coding faster and um, in more of an express way of learning code than yep. just, you know, trial and error. And like, I don't know what this else if L if statement does, but now you can learn right here, right now in two seconds. Hundred percent. Yeah, you can. It's it's one of the best investments you can do for your coding journey. Is is Copilot? I think. Um, I've I've used it. Oh, I don't know, eighteen months now, something. I didn't quite use it from the start. Um, but it's just so powerful. It makes you, it makes you happier. It makes you feel more accomplished because you don't have to either ask a senior developer all the time, going, "Oh, is this right?" Or have to Google everything to get to Stack Overflow, find someone that has the same. Like it just makes you feel accomplished and efficient and happy. It's just, I don't know. And it's not cheating. I thought it was cheating at first. It really isn't. <laughs> it feels like cheating at first because you're like, oh, I didn't write that. But so what? You'd copy it from Stack Overflow. Like, what's the difference? Right. You're not gonna um, most of you are not gonna write the code from scratch anyway. No, no, no. We did that 25 point. years ago. We don't have to do that yeah. anymore. Um, so I've just asked it to give me the same in Python. And here you go. It tells you. You want to use Flask? Here's you how you install Flask, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here's what the Python would look like. Um, so you can absolutely do that. It supports so many languages. Now, because it's trained on existing data, existing programming, and, and examples, languages that are more popular will have better results. That's mm -hmm. just how it works, right? So if you ask it about, I don't know, white space or Jelly or some sort of esoteric programming language, you're not going to get very good results. It'll give you. It will always give you a result, though. Um, it is confidently wrong sometimes. So, okay, let me. I don't. I have one slide. I just want to show you because there's something called prompt crafting, which is a really important part of using AI tools or LLMs, large language models, mm -hmm. and it makes you more efficient and gives you better results. So let me just share that one slide, and then we'll go back. We'll go back to Visual <laughs> Studio. And why are you sharing it for y'all? Understand that this means that for those of you who are scared of coding, don't have to be scared of coding anymore, right? Everyone's like, oh, I want to get into tech, but I don't, I don't want no coding though. I don't want to code. <laughs> this helps you, just helps you start from the beginning. If you if you don't know anything about coding, as long as you understand how to use GitHub Copilot and use the 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 services that are involved with it and yeah. ask questions. This is going to send your skill set to the next level. So if you if you just play with it, get it 30 days, play with it, and let's see what it does. But go ahead, Lars. I'm sorry. No, you're absolutely right. Um, it's it's I mean, I'm a nerd, right? I'm I've been doing I've been a developer for 40 years, 35 years, right? So I'm not I'm a biased person. <laughs> I like programming, I like code. 
But even if you find code scary, this is a great way of sort of easing yourself into it. Um, if, if online videos is not your thing, if you don't want to read blog posts, if you want to do things, this is a great way of actually having someone sort of guide you through it. So you're absolutely right. Um, big part of this is called prompt crafting, prompt engineering. They're very similarly related. But, and you use this for any large, large language model that you interact with, but it, it, it's very important. So I wanted to just briefly cover some guidelines around how to use it. So prompt crafting is how do I get the large language model, Copilot, to give me the results I want? How do I ask the right questions to make sure that I get the right results, right? This is a, it's a bit of a fine, fine tuned skill um, because you can forever and a day type in questions and you don't quite get back what you want. So that's a few guidelines. Um, be specific. Specificity is really important. Uh, as you saw at the start, I, you know, if I hadn't described what language and what framework I wanted to use, it would have just made it up, right? So the more specific you are, the more specific result you get back. Um, details. So include you know, style, tone, format, constraints, whatever it is that you think is specific to this. You have to treat Copilot like it was born yesterday. And it sounds a bit rude, but that's just how it is. It doesn't have the context that you do. Speaking of context, you have to in include relevant context. So that's uh, information about the domain. Um, this could have been, the calculator could have been, you know, well, we want to use... Um, a scientific calculator, or we want to, you know, whatever the domain of calculators is. God, I'm making this boring, aren't I? The domain of calculators, what the hell? <laughs> um, but it's really important that you put context in there because it, it, it doesn't know. It just doesn't know what you're after. Uh, structure, uh, and it has been proven. There is a Microsoft research paper on this. If you are nice to the AI, it will give you better results. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Um, so briefly introduce the question. Say please, say, you know, hey, thanks for helping me, et cetera. Um, give it a body so that you have an introduction of, hey, I want to create a calculator, blah, blah, blah. The body is then, oh, here's the features I want into it or the framework I want to use, the language I want to use. And then if appropriate, put a conclusion on it going, and this is what I expect as an output kind of thing, right? Maybe the conclusion would be, and this should be styled well to look like it or whatever. So you have to have this structure of it. Otherwise, it doesn't know what, what you're doing. Um, iterate, you will not get it right the first time. Keep going over it. It's fine. Just keep asking it again. It doesn't mind. You just go, oh, that's great, but not quite right. Can you adjust this? And it'll do it. It's fine. Um, biases, just acknowledge that if you are asking, say, about Python, it would have a Python bias to the results that it um, replies with. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask about a specific domain, it will have biases uh, for that. If you say it could also be cultural biases. So if you are asking about certain, you know, cultural background for some, or whatever your project is, just be aware that there will be biases in it because it's trained on human input. So it's going to have the human biases as well. Um, that's just how it is. But you can mitigate those by calling them out in your prompt as well. Conditionals, these are sometimes really good. If then something. So if this happens, if 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 this criteria, then this happens. Else, if there's something else, then this happens. You can give it examples of what you expect, and that creates a much better output because suddenly the model goes, oh, actually, I have some examples to go from. I kind of know what to do. Um, format kind of makes sense. Just for, tell it what format you want this in. Uh, maybe you wanted this to be in a table or maybe uh, whatever it might be, but we give it format, right? And then experiment, literally. Like If you sign up for the free trial, you have 30 days to just press all the buttons. Try and make it blow up. There's nothing wrong in just testing everything out. So that's the only slide I had. Promise you it wouldn't be too slide heavy. So let me just go back to VS Code So we Code do have here. a question. Um, oh, yes, cool. So Renee said, how is Copilot with the ammo and Kubernetes manifest? Can it explain things specific to Kubernetes? Um, anything that's in a file, yes. Um, OK, I'm going to, just because you asked, thanks, Renee. Um, I might just try here. Let's see. How can we word this? Um, can you explain? Share your, share your screen. I should share my screen. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to catch you before you got too fast. <laughs> see, at least you told me because sometimes there's, I've done I've done live demos and people go, yeah, you're still sharing the website. I'm like, oh, just tell me, jeepers people. Um, <laughs> here's, here's good, right? So I'm saying and I'm asking in chat, can you explain? Um, how I would create 
if I could spell. Actually, you don't have to be a good speller. It doesn't care. You can even put letters in the wrong order. It, do, it doesn't mind. Um, YAML and Kubernetes manifest. Okay. A. Let's just see if it, this would work. Kubernetes manifest to deploy the Blazor app we are working on. See what happens. All right. So yeah, the short answer was yes, and then now we're trying it because this is live, and we'll see if we can make it blow up. So there's so a Docker file. Gives example. you the Docker file for it already. It gives you the container file. Look at that. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> now it's going to give you a lot of information, um, and obviously we've gone completely different technology now, right? But good question, <laughs> absolutely. So basically, anything that it's that is on the internet, it can answer questions on specifically to your project, um, which is very cool. This is awesome. It is very awesome. All right. So we've talked about uh, slash commands. There's a few other um, shortcuts or tools that we can use. Okay. Why is this not? I'm just trying to make it bigger again. I think it's pretty big. It's not too bad. Um, but VS Code will not make it go. Oh, and the let's go over there. Whoa. There okay. We go. That there we go. icon was hidden behind my share button of, of StreamYard. That's why I couldn't see it. <laughs> it's all Look right. There we okay, go. That's oh, that's just, yeah. There we go. Um, so now. Oh, see, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was great. You know, I can't see. So, you know. <laughs> I can't see either. Um, <laughs> and I was saying to, to Broaders before, the reason I'm not sharing my whole screen is that it's a 49 inch widescreen. And then it becomes this big on your screen. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I'm sharing the window. Now, um, there's something called agents. And agents is a command you can uh, ask for down in the chat. And you just start with a with an at symbol, at. And right now, there's four. There used to be three. And then I did this. I did the workshop <laughs> for, for one client. And then I said, and there's three agents, and then there was four. So it just updates all the time, right? And it was literally from day to day. I did one workshop the one day, and again the next day, and it changed that day. So right now, there's four agents. And these are contextual uh, modifiers, let's say. So I'm going to start from the top here, GitHub. And you can see there's a little help out here. Get answers grounded in web search, code search, uh, and your enterprise knowledge bases. Now, this is interesting. There's three different levels of GitHub Copilot. and I'll this, well, it's not that interesting, actually, but there's GitHub um, Copilot for individual user. So that's, you know, if you want to just sign up, there's for business and there's for enterprise. And you get more features, obviously, so they can charge more money. That's how it works. But one of the really, really cool features about enterprise is that you can insert your knowledge base, your company knowledge base into the Copilot um, context. Right. So here I am on enterprise because at Arcana, we are a GitHub partner. So I'm on the GitHub Enterprise license that, that we have. So I can now search my enterprise knowledge base. You might not get that depending on your license. Uh, but if I use GitHub, I can then ask questions around GitHub saying, you know, it could be simple like how do actually commands for GitHub, you could just ask anyway. But <laughs> you set the context of only being GitHub, right? How do I um, create a new repo, for example? Right, we'll see what it says. Um, there you go. On the upper right side, in a GitHub place. Can you, okay, so it actually is giving us the GitHub website instructions of how to do this. Um, it could also just give me the command, but I would have probably used the other one. Let's try that again, actually. That's a good example. I've done that before. Let's use terminal, which is the next one. So the terminal is this window over here, right? It says terminal. Mm -hmm. So these are command, command lines. Command line commands. Is that the right word? I can say again, how do I create a new repo? And it should give us, there we go. So now it gives us the, just the, the terminal. That's a great, I'm going to use that again, bro. That's a great example. <laughs> um, so this is now, uh, the, con the context is the terminal. And again, this is really important. The context of what you ask, um, is all about how you get the right result back. So these agents are really handy. So there was two of them. We can ask about VS Code. 
So that's the IDE itself. How do I, you know, um, I don't know, select multiple line in one go or I, whatever you want to ask. Where's this menu for this thing? How do I build a thing in this? Or it'll give you stuff based on that. And then there's this one that I use all the time, which is workspace. Ask about your workspace. So my workspace is all of this, the whole mm. thing, not just what is open. Remember when I said at the start, Copilot will use your tab as context. If you put workspace, the context suddenly is all of your workspace. And you could ask something like, do I have any files that requires a license? Or not files, extensions, I guess. Extensions, if I could spell, come on. I think that's right. Um, so now this takes a little bit longer because it's going to collect all the information from the workspace. The bigger the workspace, the longer it takes. I think the maximum is about 50 megabyte um, of workspace size that you can ask. Hmm. And then it generates it. We'll just let it finish. We go here. Uh, the NuGet package reference in blah, blah, blah. And there are, it appears you are using several. Oh, God. Come on. Uh, such as and others. These packages typically distribute on the license. It gives you a reply. All right? So you can ask questions about the whole workspace. And you can see it's, here's the references that it found that it's basing that answer on. So those are the agents. Does that make sense? Yeah. Questions? Because you can ask about anything in the code uh, in your workspace, any files that, that represents any dependencies, any references of data, et cetera. This could be yep. good, especially if you're using, let's say, YAML files for Kubernetes or even Terraform. Um, infrastructure is code files that yep. typically, you know, you may have some modules that reference um, other forms of data and you can uh, literally ask questions based on that. Yep. Yes, you can. Um, it, I use it a fair bit. Workspace is probably the agent I use the most. Um, the I think the one they did for VS Code, that's kind of handy if you don't use VS Code that much. Um, I have a colleague that is a very good coder, but he doesn't code that much. So he's like, oh, I can't remember how to do this. So you can ask, like, hey, where is this thing again? Um, but if you use it regularly, I find I don't use that agent that much. The terminal one's really handy. Um, and the GitHub one is very new, so I haven't really played around with it that much. Uh, but Workspace is my favorite for sure. So now that is two other ways of oh, – let me just recap. We have GitHub Copilot, which is an extension into VS Code in this case. We can use the chat down here to talk to GitHub Copilot. We can use the inline, control I here. We can ask stuff inline. We have slash commands, inline slash commands here, which are those four of them. We have agents, which are down here. You can ask, you know, set the context for something. We actually have slash commands down here as well. And there's a few more. Um, you can see here that it comes up with a wow. whole bunch. Yeah, but these are specifically to the agents. So we have terminal explain like that, terminal explain. That explains something in the terminal, as it says in the hint. So, so you can be, use that to explain an error and stuff. Yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, or say, oh, what, well, you know, what I just wrote doesn't work. Can you help me? Or whatever it might be. Um, we have um, the VS Code API and search. So we can, you know, within a VS Code. And then there's all the workspace ones, which are really helpful. Uh, the workspace fix, so you can say there's some weird error somewhere. Can you help try and fix it? That is less likely to come up with a good fix. Just warning you, it is a harder thing to do apparently. So the workspace fix is handy to get guided, but it probably won't give you the right fix, just saying. Um, and then we have new, and this is actually a, a bit of a cheap thing. You can scaffold code for a new space, workspace. I could have used that to start with. But then I would be jumping ahead, right? So you could use this to sort of, oh, I need a new database schema for something. Oh, I need a new whatever, right, uh, in part of your project. That's really handy. And then there is some specifically new notebook is a new Jupyter notebook, which is usually for AI kind of thing. And we have tests. I'm not going to go into tests as much, but you can get this to write unit tests for you. I can quickly do it here. And I'll show you. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. So here you can go say tests slash tests and we'll create unit tests for you because we like doing testing, right? All of us write unit tests for all of our code, correct? <laughs> right. No. Right. Now this, 
<laughs> because of the zooming in part, this looks a bit clunky, but here's a bunch of tests on how to test that specific thing. All right, the whole bunch here. And I think if I click accept, it should save it in a new file, I believe. Yep. So here's all the tests. Oh, nice. All right. So are they correct? Will they work? I'm not sure. But we have something, right? Again, it's going to give a best effort. <laughs> um, so that's really, really handy, really cool way of, of doing or getting ahead of testing as well. So let me just close that one again. Um, that's the, the shortcuts. And then there's, as Steve Jobs would say, just one more thing. Um, we have something called hash variables. So the hash sign here. And this, again, is context. Um, these are really, really handy when you want to make sure it's absolutely just doing the one thing. So editor is uh, the visible source code in the active editor. So that's what we see here. We have file, pick a file. So you can actually talk about a specific file and it'll help you up here. Well, let's talk about the test then, right? So it gives you context. These are called hash variables. And you can ask questions about a specific file. Um, then we have selection. Obviously, we selected something on the screen in the editor. And then we have terminal, last command. So last run command, you can ask your questions. Or, or sorry, you can set the context of the last run command and ask questions about that. Um, or selection in the terminal. These are super handy. I only learned about these like, I don't know, a month ago, for three, mm. two weeks, not, not long. And they're super helpful. Um, so my point is, there's a lot of ways you can inter interact with GitHub Copilot. I would suggest if you want to get started, just start chatting. The chat is my favorite way of getting started with the project. Because you can start typing and it'll help you, but it's much easier for me to describe what my project is going to do and what I wanted to do, and then start with the chat. And it'll give you an output and it'll try not to help you, and you get something. Then you can start working on that something, start typing in code, see what changes, and you can then ask it either inline or get its suggestions inline, or you can continue to use the chat. It's you got to find your preferred way to talk to Copilot and to um, to to use it in a way that makes sense for your workflow. But right at the start, I did mention workflow. This is why this is so powerful. I never, ever leave the IDE, right? I never go and go, oh, I got to Google something. And then you have 16 Google tabs open per hour or whatever, however you work, right? Um, because you go, oh, that sounds like a good idea. I might get back to that. Instead, we have a conversation. We have someone sitting next to us, virtually, figuratively, that helps us along the way, that understands our project, that has the context, and doesn't have to get up to speed tomorrow when you go and ask again. It is very, very, very powerful in giving you flow. And it's so important yeah. as a developer to be in the flow, right? And, and that workflow could be, hey, Copilot, I am very new to coding and I'm scared to learn. Everything yep. that I do from now on, I want you to explain to me as if I'm a 15-year-old student. Let's do that. I like that example. Let's just do this. I'm just going to create a new folder. Just bear with me. I like that. Let's see what it does. Okay. And I'm going to open folder. New developer journey. Don't save it. So now we have brand new, nothing here, right? New developer journey. So I've just installed Copilot. It says, hi, Copilot. I am very new to coding. From now on, could you make sure you explain everything as if I don't know anything about coding or programming right? you can, so you can set the context again i'm setting the context yep and kick and cobalt goes yeah of course again <laughs> this is the beauty of it it's always so positive yeah of course yeah definitely <laughs> um all right so let's see um so you could now go how do i create a new website Right. I'm specifically asking, specifically asking broad questions. Is that right? Anyway, it's on purpose 
that I'm asking a very broad question because this is probably what I would ask. Like, I just want to create a website. How do I do that? And then it'll, again, it now has the assumption that, hey, I don't know anything about coding. So good questions. You can absolutely do that. And there you go. It'll give you a whole bunch of steps now that you get. And then you can ask into more detail about each step, et cetera. Is that what you meant? Yes, but I also meant like, hey, Copilot, I want to learn Python. And everything that I ask, I want you to break it down to me as if I don't know anything. So let's say first, I want to, let's just say somebody is in uh, AWS and they say, I want to learn how to deploy an EC2 instance with Python. And can you explain it to me as if I don't know any Python? Yeah, but I don't have to explain that because I've already said I don't know anything about programming. Well, yeah, yeah, true. Yep, yep. <laughs> so for a person who is working on console stuff with cloud, right, you're clicking yep. and you're deploying, now you can learn how to write it in code and understand how code works just like that within your cloud service provider environment. Using Python. And the other thing I haven't showed you because, you know, we only have, well, not long to go, is that you can get Copal in the terminal as well. So Copal will help you in the terminal. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. This is awesome. It's so good. All right. And it's it gets you from, to use a really overused cliche term, from zero to hero in very short time. Uh, yep. It really helps you excel and get. And that's one of the things I've always pushed with Copal is that it's actually good for career progression because you feel more accomplished because you don't have to ask someone all the time. You get a result faster. You learn things quicker and you because you because it's fun. You like it, is my assumption. Like this is, hey, I can do this. And that means that you become more confident in it and actually boosts your career to progress faster. It's just how it works. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can't recommend this tool enough and what lars is saying is that's how you take ai to help you expedite your career to another level yeah we don't have to be scared of it in fact of i'm gonna lose my job i'm gonna lose my job no guess what no. we're using it to become better programmers the better better engineers overall right so um i'm gonna upload a question real quick that so came in. Jason Lee said, what security and privacy measures are in place when using Copilot? Good question. Yep. Um, so security, that's an interesting one. Uh, GitHub has a product called Advanced Security. So that's for deployment, GitHub Advanced Security, or GAS, um, which uh, is an, an addition. you got to pay for it. But it does stuff. Um, actually, that's not true. If you have a public repository on GitHub, it is enabled for free. And what it does is make sure that as you deploy, you don't have connection strings in there or passwords or secrets or other things that shouldn't be deployed. And it does this um, before you even check it in. So the idea being there's been a lot of attacks where people have checked in a password or a connection string and then gone, oh, crap, and then run uh, and updated the code and done another check-in. But the history is there. So people mm -hmm. have gone through the history going, oh, I'll just get it from there. And then they've done the attack anyway. So this is a, one of the security measures um, that GitHub does. If you want that on your private repos in your enterprise, you have to pay for GitHub Advanced Security. There's a few other things it does as well. Um, and then what was the other question? What was the other part of it? Um, sure. Privacy. Yep. So Copilot is trained on public uh, code. It will not use what you are writing to train the model. If that makes sense. Um, That's awesome. what, yeah. So it will keep your prompt that you asked. And I, there's some settings around that, how long it keeps it for, uh, depending on your, on your license level, so that it can train it based on the prompt, but it will not keep the code. I hope that makes sense. Uh, is that the question? Is that, uh, is that what's being asked? Security and privacy measures are in place when using Copilot. Yeah. Yeah, that's the question. I, I think that answers it. Otherwise, let me know, Jason. Um, yeah. And then Lavelle has another one. So if we wanted to yeah. learn how to code from scratch, this is where we would start with Copilot. It is a way. I'm not going to tell you you have to do this. It is a way to to learn how to code. 
if you like someone to tell you in a video tutorial, then do that. If you like someone, you know, like level up in tech and take you by the hand and give you some exercises and help you along the way, do that. If you like blog posts, do that. This is just a tool that I like because it allows me to test out things and it, I can ask questions in real time and I can get answers. Um, yep. But it's it might not suit everybody. I'm not going to say this is the silver bullet because it really isn't. It is a tool, but it absolutely can help you learn to code. So for those of you who want to go over this over and over again and just kind of get your hands on with this lesson, this will be on our YouTube in about 30 minutes. So you could definitely uh, go to the Level Up a Tech YouTube channel, check it out, and follow Lars as he uh, progresses in showing this uh, GitHub Copilot demo and how it works and get your hands on with it and do what you need to do to be able to learn. The most important thing is just you don't know what you don't know until you start. 100%. So you can scare yourself out of starting it, or you could just do it scared and realize, oh, this is awesome. I I, I didn't think this would be that dope of a product that right. I would be hooked to it. So either yeah. one, you know, let's choose do it scared. Oh, yeah. And the whole explain command in GitHub Copilot, it just makes you feel happy because you go, I don't get this. Can you explain it? It goes, of course I can. Yeah, of course I can. Always mm -hmm. positive. Yeah. So. Um, I know we're out of time, but I really hope you all enjoyed this session. I really appreciate you, Lars, for coming in and showing GitHub Copilot and how sure. it works. I'm going to probably check it um, out more tonight and really start developing some stuff because I'm I'm a secret coder, you know, by, you know, by heart. And, and sometimes I love being in a, in a room, lights off, just making something work and feel like I've learned something and then increase yep. my knowledge that literally you could take what it could take you maybe six months to a year to learn and you can learn it within a few weeks. Yeah. And, yeah. and just expedite your learning growth and showcase your skills at work. So if you all have, I'm sorry that I, I was going to no, just say it's for any level of skill. It's not yep. just for beginners, Like you, yep. you can use it at any level. Yep. So if you want to connect with Lars, Lars Clint on LinkedIn. Let me stop sharing this so they can see your name. And at Lars Clint at Instagram as well. Uh, I assume that's your Instagram. That's your Instagram handle. Uh, Twitter, X, whatever Twitter. it's called. Instagram. Okay. Um, it might, if it's not Lars Clint, it's L Clint. Sometimes someone has you know, pretended to be me. I don't know. But yeah, in, you'll just Google my name. You'll find it. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any questions, reach out to Lars. You want to learn more about it. He is the guy. And, you know, if you want just plain old guidance, um, I'm sure he'll be able to answer your questions as well. But I hope you all enjoyed this. This will be on the YouTube tonight so you can check it out. Thank you all so much for joining us. I really appreciate you all just checking out these lives. And we're going to have more uh, coming up. We're going to try to do more and more and more frequently. But until then, enjoy GitHub Copilot and let's keep leveling up in tech. And Thanks, we're man. out. See you all See later. You.